Okay. Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to the uh, session two uh, of this advanced webinar series on air quality data and tools. Uh, today, we are going to, uh, it's a two hour session, so we will probably <coughs> take a break uh, of five minutes at the end of one hour. We have about five different. Uh, Python script uh, which we will run to perform different analysis, extract the data, map the data, and in session, this session we are going to only focus on uh, analyzing and reading data from MODIS aerosol data sets, which is uh, I'm going to describe in a little bit. But I want to first go over some of the logistic for today's. So like I said, we have five different codes to run through. We'll spend about 10, 15 minutes for each code. So I would expect that uh, everybody will be able to run the code. I will share my screen and we'll go by step by step. We'll run the code, we will see the output, we'll explain the output. We will also talk a little bit about the potential applications and then finally, we'll go over some of the section of the code where you can modify things to perform different tasks or to change the parameters or to change uh, other uh, variables which you might want to do. So I hope everybody was able to uh, install the Python, but before let's see. So if you can see, I'm on slide number three, both this session, today's session, and session number three. We will cover Python script to perform similar tasks. So in today's session, like I said, we will go over aerosol data sets. In Monday's session, we will go over OMI data sets, uh, specifically NO2 and SO2, uh, using similar Python script. In order to give you a flavor of two different operating system, uh, we will do today's presentations using Mac or Apple operating system. Uh, and the Monday session will be done in the window machine. We will use exactly the same Anaconda to do run over all Python script. Uh, the layout structure uh, should remain same. In today's presentation, you will see uh, the directory structure more uh, from the Mac than the window. Mm -hmm. So, and we also uh, expect that all the codes should run smoothly uh, irrespective of the operating system. Uh, we have tested them on Mac and Windows, uh, and we hope that they works on Linux as well, provided you have all the right packages. Okay, so this was slide uh, we presented last week, uh, last in the last session, uh, Wednesday. This just gives you the overview of what Python packages you need, what test run you need to do, uh, all the uh, data and uh, Python script which we will use for today. If you have not downloaded those, please do that using this link given here. Uh, that will be very, very required to perform the uh, run the script in today's session. So this is the, how the Python test works. Uh, we have again given this in the last presentation. I'm just repeating the people have not done yet and if they are still trying to do this few more minutes, you can start doing that. Uh, okay, so before I go on the data, let me ask you a couple of quick questions so I get an understanding on how many people are ready to actually do this. So the first question, uh, which you can answer using the skip polls, just want to get a feeling of which operating system you are using. Okay, so looks like uh, most people are using window machine. Uh, so I, I don't see any problem in that. Uh, you should be able to do exactly the same thing. The Anaconda 
structures and the terminals and everything uh, looks very, very similar to what they look on the Mac. Uh, uh, about 12% people are using Macs, and then there are others which I'm not sure what they are. But hopefully it should work on everything else. <clears throat> I hope you are doing this on a computer, not on a uh, I on a phone, a smartphone, or a uh, tablet. Uh, it might be difficult to do those on those. If you have proper computer, uh, please switch to that computer so that you can actually work with the script and the data in more efficient way. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, poll I have is is more relevant to this one is have you installed the Python including all the packages which we recommended so if you can just quickly respond so that I if you have not done that still we have a few more minutes please go ahead and do that they are really they don't really take a lot of time uh, quickly you can do uh, from my own experience, when I installed Anaconda, most package comes with Anaconda. I had to only install two package. One is PyHDF, and the next one is the base map. Other than those two, uh, I, all other packages were part of the uh, Python installation. Uh, you might, for the session on Monday, you might also have to install H5PY, which is to read the NetCDF file or the HDF5 format. So these are the three main packages I think you might have installed. Uh, most other packages comes as default with Anaconda when you install Anaconda. Okay, so that is good news. We have 94% people ready with their python package and python installations so most people will be able to do it those who were not able to do it due to any error uh, try if you are facing some problem try to uh, put that in a question and there might be other people who might be able to help you uh, uh, as far as from our side we will have very limited actually during the session, it will be very difficult for us to help through the installation. But there may be other people who might be able to help. So uh, just uh, post your question. There might be people who can help you. <clears throat> OK, so the if you already installed all the Python and the packages, so the next question is, were you able to run the test underscore python.py code, which is just to test if you have all the required packages to run the script, which will go today and on Monday. So this is very, if you have done already, this code should run without any error, and it should produce an image, uh, uh, which is modus aerosol optical depth without any error on your screen. So in next two, three, two to three minutes, just please go over the uh, all the, uh, if you were not able to install any package, please do that. If you are not able to download the data and uh, codes from the RSET website, please do that now. And then in about two minutes, I will start uh, the, we'll give a little bit introduction of the data sets which we are using, and then we'll go through one by one a script. Okay, so two minute break.
Ok, eu sou... One point I want to make sure that most people have the data and code downloaded. Please do that. Uh, the uh, link to that is also on the training web page and also on the chat window. If you scroll up a little bit, then it is av available there. And if you are having trouble in running the test code, please check the error message and see which specific package is missing. The error message should say that this package is not found on your installation. If you don't find that package, just type Anaconda install that package name in search engine. Uh, you can use the Google and that will allow, that will give you a answer right away. It will give you a command from that search. You take, copy paste that command on your Anaconda terminal uh, it will start with conda install something and that should actually help you install that package make sure you have all the permission on your computer if you do not have permission certain permission writing permission on your computer then the installation will give come with an error so please do that So let's start now. I hope everybody has got what they need and uh, we will start through. So now first I will start to the just little bit about the data sets. So now I'm going to start with the data sets. Now, the two data sets which we are going to use today is MODIS level two, 10 kilometer aerosol product. And as you downloaded the zip file and unzipped the, then you will see four of the files, the name start with MOD04 or MYD04, depending on whether it's Terra or Aqua, the product, that's of the product name. The next in the product name L2, it means level two data. Those, and then the next one start with, start with dot A, first four digits stand for the year. Next three digit start, uh, stand for the Julian day. The Julian day is the day number of the year. So January 1st will be 001, January 31st will be 00031, and February 1st will be 032. And that that's how it goes. So depending on the fiscal, uh, depending on the leap year, it will be the last day of that will be 365 or 366. The next is the timestamp, two digit, uh, hour and two digit uh, minutes. The time isn't given in the UTC or GMT time. It's not local time. So please uh, keep that in mind when we start analyzing the data. The next three digits are represent the collections or the version of the data. In this specific uh, presentation, we will use the collection six data. It says 006. More recently, the MODIS team has released a collection 6.1, so you will start seeing 061 instead of 006. That's the most recent data which has been uh, released, but that data has not been yet processed for the entire mission, so we are going to still use the collection 6 data. The last date information is file processing information. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. So this is the HDF file, typical HDF file name. If you go to three kilometer product, then what you will notice is everything remains same except the L2 become 3K. That just says that it's still it's level two, but it's a three kilometer resolution. Everything else remains same. And all these HDF files can be read in many different 
computer codes you can use hdf look which is free panoply which is also free ideal is the licensed you know, we have on our set website some codes to read from the ideal uh, today we are going to focus on the python but you can also use fortran matlab and any other c or any other packages to read this uh, they cannot be you specific you need a specific software to read this file they cannot be just open in word or text editor okay okay so inside each hdf file uh, there are many sds parameter and which we will go through once we start running the code but these are some of the major one which we are going to use today i just want to go over them so the optical depth land and ocean is retrieved using a dark target algorithm in we in the first session we have gone through three different algorithms which runs on the modis so this specific parameter is optical depth land and oceans is you retrieved using the arc target algorithm the data recommended to be used for quantitative analysis by the modis science teams are over land qa3 means quality assurance equal to 3 so each pixel in that data sets comes with a quality flag value and that quality flag value varies from 0 1 2 and 3 so for quantitative analysis science team overland recommended you to use only value 3 over ocean the quality assurance recommendation are 1 2 and 3 they don't recommend 0 zero quality flag is good if you are just making an image for qualitative purpose Uh, then you can use it. Otherwise, for quantitative purpose, it is not recommended. Both of these optical depth land and ocean data is available in both 10 kilometer and 3 kilometer file. The next SDS which we will look today is dark target D blue optical depth 550 combined. As we talked again in the earlier presentation, that the two algorithm dark target applies on the vegetated area. T blue applies on the bright surfaces like desert and big cities, big cities. This product is combined of the two product at 550 nanometer, and both uh, the way the there is algorithm which actually merge this product uh, based on a specific NDVI thresholds and other criteria. But this product is only available at 10 kilometer spatial resolution. This product is not available at 3 kilometer. the reason for that that the deep blue is not available at 3 km so if you are interested at 3 km then the only product is available through the dark target algorithm and not from the deep blue algorithm these are the sds name for quality assurance land quality this is basically showing the quality flag associated with the dark target product and we will see there are some other sds uh, when we start running the script which might be helpful again i think i have already gone through this uh, the recommended quality flag over ocean is 1 to 3 over land only 3 uh, the factors which goes into this calculating this quality flags uh, varies uh, based on the algorithm in case of dark target algorithm uh, they can be include the number of pixels to average in the 10 km box uh, how the arrows were uh, fit, fitted during uh, in was the process when you compare the satellite measured radiance with the radio transfer calculated in a lookup table and over ocean they also take into account how close they were from the glint uh, remember glint we talked about the specular reflection over ocean surface uh, in session 1 over land um, other uh, other than those factors uh, surface reflectance become very major part in deciding the quality of the retrieved aod value okay so with that uh, let's start with i'm going to now share my screen and we'll go through the process uh, first we will see how we can start the python using anaconda and then we will start running code one by one so i hope everybody is ready with the their codes and everything is ready so i'm going to go over my window from the mac so this is
Okay. Okay. So right now, what you are seeing is my Mac computer screen on which this is my terminal. And if I do PWD, then it shows the correct directory. And it's session two. And if I do the ls on here, it shows all the HDF files and all the Python script which we will use today. Okay. Everybody is at this, can see this on their home directory where they are. Okay. Uh, now on the Mac, if I go on the bottom, then I see a circle, green circle, which is basically um, Anaconda Navigator. Uh, on window, the icon remains same. It might be located in different place, or you can search it depending on how it was. So just open the Anaconda Navigator. I click on that. And then it will start the Anaconda application. OK. Now, when you see, it comes up with this screen. And there is a lot of options here. Uh, these are some of the ways in which you can interact with the Python or you can edit your code. Uh, there are different uh, GUI types, uh, editors, uh, consoles, in which you can run the Python. And each of them have a different um, uh, advantage and disadvantage. In today's and uh, even on Monday, what we are going to use is a Python editor called Spider, which is on the right left side, uh, S-P-Y-D-E-R. A spider and I will click launch on that. Okay, so I hope everyone is able to see on my screen and if you can see this type of, of layout where I have a space on the left where my codes will be there. You will see some spider editor and green lines. Right now, I have not opened any code here. On the right, you should see console of IPython. If you click on the bottom of the spider uh, console, then you will see the two options, IPython console and history. In some cases, you might have seen a third window on the top side. And you can take that window off if you like to see in this view. So if you go on the view, there is options, how many different windows you want to see, the windows layout options and other things. So I'm going to just use these two window in this format, which on the left side, my code will be visible. On the right side, it's IPython console where the code will run and I will see the output. I have specifically increased the font size here so that everybody can see it very carefully. It will uh, allow us to see. So please, uh, uh, if you are facing any problem, please uh, are not able to see the same thing. Uh, you can type in your questions in the question answers and somebody from our team or somebody else from the uh, audience might be able to help you. So. I'll give you a few seconds to make sure that everybody is on this, this page. Now we are going to move on to the next step. If everybody is on here, then there are a few uh, buttons on this spider I would like to point out. One is the arrow on the le top left side, the green arrow. This button is to run the code. Once the code is displayed here, you can click that button and it will run on the right. There are other ways to run the code also, which I'm not going to go, and I would encourage everyone to actually explore those. You can run directly from the IPython console, or there are other ways to do it. But we are going to use this arrow button right now uh, uh, throughout this session and next session. 
and please when you click that please watch for result on the right side uh, where the ipython console is uh, if you go on the top of ipython console which is right top then there is a stop button which is a square when your code is running it will turn into i think a magenta or brown color you can click on that and it will stop your code running uh, if you click on that option button then you will be also see other options so you can actually reconnect restart kernel so when you restart the kernel it means it will reset all the variable in the python so it's a good idea to restart after each of these codes so that you don't get any error okay so the first code i'm going to run is I will click on the left side. Please follow with me so that I'm going to do this really slow. So move your cursors to the top left and you will see a folder type sign which is second in the list. It says open file. Okay. Now my directory is on the desktop. So I will click desktop. And then the session two is the directory in which my all codes and programs are there. Okay. So the first code we are going to go is says read mod underscore mod underscore aerosol and list sds.py. Can everybody find that? Then you select that and say open and the code start appearing on the left side screen okay so let me start again if you can see the code on your left side then you will notice on this code that on, on line number 20 which i have highlighted right now is a file list equal to open bracket dash file list dot text so this is the file list which the code required and if i go back to my directory where data and codes are located what you see if i do ls if i do ls star dot text i don't see any text file here so we need to create a list of files which we want to process so what we want to process is all this is so in your command you can do ls star hdf greater than sign and then the name of the that file list dot text when you do this make sure the file list is is spelled with the same small and capital letter as in the code so f is a small everything is a small except the l in the list and when i press the enter and i do again alice you will see a file list dot text i can open that using vi editor in mac file list dot text and then you will see all the files are listed in that if you are on window machine you can open a text editor and copy all the names of file in that it's fine to do that way if you are on a linux machine same command which i run on the mac should work just fine the goal is to create this file list make sure there is nothing else in, in that text file and the name must be file list or text if you change the name you can do that then you also have to change that name here in the code as well in order to make sure to run it completely so just to remind again on the window machine you have to open a text file using a text editor and then copy all the names of file in that save it as file list dot text 
uh, if you are using word then make sure you save it dot text file and choose save as dot text otherwise the program will not able to read it okay so although this poll says are you able to duplicate what you see what i am trying to ask is are you able to create that file text and you can see that in your directory if you are able to see that please say yes if you are not able to see that please no for those who are having difficulty in creating file list they can also do there's another way to create this file list i think it's specifically for the window users uh, if you go let me actually close the poll because i see there are about 30 percent people who are still having trouble in creating this file list so again i'm back to the spider window and i'm going on the right side so first thing you have to do is cd say pwd okay the same command which i run on the mac terminal you can run on this ipython console and this will tell you the current directory where you are so my current directory is users pick up the three desktop session two that's where my code and python codes are there make sure this pwd command is showing your current directory if it is not then you can do the cd and then type in your path you can do that from the window machine also it should work as just as this one i'm going to just repeat my path because i'm already on that and then press enter this is another way to go to that directory once you are in that directory you say ls and it should display the all the hdf files and all the codes and a file list now if you are struggling to create the file list you can create that here also you have to just run the same command it's ls star hdf greater than sign space name of the file list which is file l capital list dot text so you can see ls star ls space star dot hda space greater than sign space f i l e l capital i s t dot text and then i enter once i do the enter i can see the file then you do again the ls and then you should be able to see the file list dot text now i'm going to ask this question again because this is an important steps and it will be used for all the routines which we are going to use to so i'm going to do one more time poll and again this poll says are you able to duplicate what you see but my real question is are you able to see the file list dot text in your directory where the code and data is there okay so i believe about most people were able to see this uh, those who were not able to see it please follow the instruction as i described you can see that on my screen uh, they they are actually just here so go to the first first step is go to the directory where the codes and uh, uh, data is uh, kept just do the cd on your ipython console do the ls you should see all the list of files here and then you do ls star dot hdf and greater than sign file list text that should put all the hdf file into that file uh, list dot text files and now you're re if you have everything this one now you're ready to run the code okay so what this code is going to do is going 
to read each of these file and will display a list of SDS. SDS, as I just explained earlier, they are scientific data sets. Uh, they are parameter, specific parameter, latitude, longitude, optical depth, land and ocean, and they will list this. So I'm going to run. In order to run, I will go on the top of this Python uh, spider editor, and then I will click on that green arrow which I talked earlier. If you click on that, it says run file, and I say click. Once I click, you will see some action on the right side, IPython console. You should see it says run file. This. So you can also run through the command line, but it should say, say that. And what it will tell you is, would you like to, the, to process the file name. So what it doing right now, the code is, it is reading the list of files, which is in file list.txt, and taking one file at a time, and it's asking, would you like to process? Now, there is a trick here. It says you need to answer yes and no. Now, the trick here is, first, make sure you click next to the bracket after no, and then the way you enter yes or no is it has to be in parentheses. So use one comma y like this. If you just type y, then because we are using Python 2.7, it will come up with an error because that's how the code is done. If you are using 3.6, uh, then you might not see that error. But in, since we are using Python 2.7, it will come up with error. So make sure you enter Y or N in the same way. Now, once you do that, I click Enter. And what you will see on your IPython console is a list of 52 different SDS parameters, which are inside that HDF file. So I just browse up a little bit and it says, this is a modest three kilometer file. Here is list of SDS in your file. And it will list all the SDS. And then the program goes to the next line where it says, do you want to process another file? So I'm going to just pause for a minute, give everybody two minutes to make sure they're able to run. After that, I will go through this process again so that everybody who is behind, they can, and then we'll go over some of this SDS to just learn about what they are. So please take two minutes to run this and make sure you are on this line. Don't uh, run through all the files yet. I want to go over some of this SDS before we make a run to the other files. Looks like most people are able to see and run in a way I'm doing here. Uh, there are still few people left. Let me go over very briefly a few things which have been pointed out in the question answer. One, if you are running Python 3.6, then you might be seeing a print error when you run the code, and that is most likely coming from the line 50. Uh, so if you see a print statement just before that line in line 49, you can see the print is in whatever I like to print is inside a parenthesis. So if you want to make correction, you can just put parenthesis, which I'm going to just do it here, but I'm going to take it off again because I'm not running 3.6. Uh, so if you do this way, it should solve the problem. If it does not solve the problem, please com comment this line. And just make it inactive so that it doesn't print at all. So this will mess up how the output look, but your code should run properly. So that's one thing. Second is people also have trouble in creating the file list.txt. And that's because when they are running the LS on their 
computer, uh, there is a lot more information is displayed along with the file name. So I think that depends on how the default setting is done on your computer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know instant solutions to that, but what you can do is you can do old style, go to the folder, copy all the file name of HDA, create a text file using any text editor you are using either on Mac or window, copy paste, save as that file name, and that should do the job. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just for sake of uh, running this code again, I'm going to run it for the next file also, which is again a three kilometer file. Okay, and it comes from Modis Aqua. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to again click here on my IPython console. Make sure when you are typing something or running, your cursor is in that window. Otherwise, that window will not be activated. And you might, by unintentionally, you might be able, you might actually modify your code, and that can give some error. So if my cursor is here and I start typing, by unintentionally, I'm going to modify my code, and that will actually cause error when you're running. So I'm on IPython console. Again, I will say yes, just for the people who were not able to do it in first time. Uh, it's going to produce same information because I'm reading the same file list. Okay, now I want to go over a few of the SDS here. The first one, uh, let me actually, I'm going to pick some of them which are more relevant for this uh, air quality study. So one thing you will need is parameter number 13, which is latitude. So for each AOD pixel, there's a latitude, and then there is a longitude also, which is on 31, number 31. Okay, so the parameter 13 is latitude of that pixel, parameter 31 is the longitude. Parameter 30 is also important SDS. It says land sea flag. It will tell you whether this AOD pixel is over land or over ocean. Uh, if you are interested in knowing the geometry, there are parameters like sensor zenith angle, which tells you whether that pixel is at nadir or at, at the edge of the swath. Glint angles tells you where the, uh, how far is from the glint. Uh, sensor zenith, azimuth angles, solar zenith angles, all these are sun satellite geometry related, which you may not require in application. But if you are uh, evaluating the product, then those might become more important. Some of the product I recommend not to use, they are just here for diagnosis purpose. For example, you will see mass concentration land on eight number. I strongly recommend not to use this product. This is not a validated product. It is just for purpose of diagnosis. And we often check this for some of our algorithm run. So this is not recommended to be used uh, for any application. Uh, similarly, we have this aerosol type land on 32. That's also, it's just a way of telling for the algorithm which aerosol model it picked. So you will see values like urban, uh, ocean, uh, sea salt, or things like that. And again, it's not, uh, you can use it qualitatively, but it's not really telling you what kind of aerosols in there. Okay, so the product uh, which we are going to use are land ocean quality flag 46. This is the quality flag which I was talking earlier. This has a value of zero, one, two, three. Three is the best over land, one, two, and three are best over ocean. So this is the one which we are going to use to mask the bad pixels. SDS number 48, ocean, optical depth, land and ocean. 
this is optical depth aerosol optical depth at 3 km at 550 nanometer retrieved from modis dark target algorithm both land and ocean and it only includes data for highest quality so this parameter only have data corresponding to quality flag equal to 3 over land and quality flag equal to 1 2 and 3 over ocean so this is the safest parameter to use for aerosol optical depth uh, analysis for quantitative purpose that will assure that there is no lower quality data is used there is also image optical depth land on ocean let me find which number is that uh, it's over here number 20 it's called image optical depth land and ocean this parameter is again optical depth over both land and ocean but it does contain all the quality flags so it has 0 1 2 3 over land same 0 1 2 3 over ocean again this is at 550 nanometer so if you are using image optical depth land and ocean then you will also need to use optical uh, the quality flag uh, parameter which i just showed uh, the 46 number parameter land ocean quality flag so if you use these together then you can actually select which pixel to use which pixel not to use in your analysis okay now i'm going to since this is same file i'm going to just say no next also i'm going to say no because it's again three kilometer file now the next file which is number fifth in your list it's mod myd04 underscore l2 it means this is 10 kilometer data file we were so far looking three kilometer file now we are looking 10 kilometer file so you will see there are differences in sds between 10 kilometer and 3 kilometer and the reason for those differences are that 3 kilometer does not have a deep blue product 10 kilometer has a deep blue product so i'm going to say yes same way as i did earlier and then press yes so now you can see in case of three kilometer file you had 52 sds now you have 72 different sds and as you browse it up then it says this is modis 10 kilometer file so the code also identify whether it's three kilometer or 10 kilometer for the dark target algorithm most of the sds remain same as i discussed for three kilometer products so you will have same latitude same longitude the optical depth parameter image optical depth is all also there uh, the 21 image optical depth land and ocean with all the quality flag and then the it also has optical depth land and ocean uh, which is parameter number let's see they have moved around just because so the land ocean quality flag is at 58 now and optical depth land ocean let me see is 64. now there are parameter now which is start with the deep view so you can see all the parameter which are coming from the deep blue algorithm they start with the deep blue so deep blue aerosol algorithm flag land blue deep blue spectral aerosol optical depth land remember the deep blue product is only available on land it is not available over ocean so that's another difference the important parameter which we will look our deep blue spectral aerosol optical depth over land it's in three different channels and there is another product called deep blue aerosol optical depth at 550 land qa flags so this is qa flags for 
from the deep blue algorithm. Again, the algorithm flag varies from zero to three. The deep blue team recommend to use quality flag two and three. And then there are other parameters also available from this. Uh, the one which is combined product is called deep blue dark target combined. Let me find it uh, here. This is quality flag deep blue. Okay, let's see where is the combined product. Deep blue and strong, deep blue spectrum optical depth, deep blue spectral optic, AOD, this is AOD 550 dark target deep blue, yeah. So the parameter number 38, it start with AOD underscore 550 dark target deep blue combined product. This is the one where the two algorithm have been combined for the 10 kilometer. So you can actually save this list as one of the file on your computer and that will be useful for you. I'm going to just say no for all other files because it's just running the same thing. The code on the left side, uh, you don't really have to change much in this code. Uh, it is very simple code. It mostly runs on, we have tested on the aerosol product, but it should run on any other uh, HDF file. Only thing you might want to change if you need to is this file list dot text. Right now it's reading from this file. If you want to change this file name, you can do that uh, in the code. Otherwise, I won't change anything uh, on this code. So let's see if you if you are able to do what I have done so far and then we will move on from the next. Uh, uh, the first code was a little bit difficult because we were trying to make sure all the Python and everything is in place and all everything is working. The next code, piece of code should be relatively easy to run, uh, but they will provide more on that. So I don't have any new polls here, uh, but please, I'm going to give like a three minutes to for the people who were not able to run this and they still want to try. Uh, please take like three minutes. Uh, let's take a three to five minute break so you can actually do this code. And for those who already done this, they can take a break. Uh, they can get the coffee, water, or whatever you like to do. And I'm going to get some water. So. Uh, it's a five minute break and then I'll come back and we'll start running the next code. This should be relatively more easier because now we have gone through the process of running the code and we have tried to get actually the running process very similar for each of these codes. Uh, meanwhile, if you have question, please keep typing in the question answer. We'll try to answer them as much as we can. Thank you. Okay, so for those of you who are still having trouble in creating the file list, uh, we are actually creating a file list of the data file which we have provided. So it will only applicable to the people who are using the data which we have provided in the zip file. Uh, they should be able to download it uh, in a few minutes and then start working on that. Remember, all the five codes will use that file list. So if you have it, do not delete it. Uh, if you don't, uh, try to download it or create it in, in one of the method which we described earlier. Okay, so looks like uh, uh, most people were able to do this step. I can see 82% uh, people were able to do it. Uh, uh, those who are not able to do it, uh, please try uh, downloading that uh, file list which we are loading uh, and that should help you to run through that. So meanwhile, uh, in order to prepare for the next, 
I'm going to go on the top of the spider uh, menu and click on the setting. If you can see my uh, uh, mouse, and I will say restart kernel. This you don't have to do it, but I am going to do it just because I want to make sure my Python uh, environment doesn't have anything from my previous code. Now I will go on the left where the code is displaying and then click on the file name and there's a cross on the left which says close the tab. I click on that and it will close it and it will ask whether you want to change any of the cells. I will say no and then it will close. So this is, I'm back to my original step where first time I started this console. So the next code which we are going to run is called, so I'm going to just, and for those of you actually who would like to do this in spare time, go over this again. Uh, the PPT which has been provided does have a step by step instruction and a screenshots. So that should also help you to go over in your own time. So one thing I would like to uh, talk about the application of this code. This is basically to provide HDF files and the names in, inside the HDF files. Uh, since HDF file is not something which you can open in any text editor or Word or uh, PowerPoint, it required a special code. So this actually, that is why this Python script is created. This will help you to see what are the SDS inside in a specific HDF file so that you can use those in your analysis. That's the purpose of this code. The next one is we are going to do map aerosol optical depth. And to do that, we will again now the process for people who have already done successfully the first code, the process should be very similar and easy to do. Again, I will go on the left, click on that folder menu, and then by default, it will go to the directory where I have my codes and files. If it is not, please navigate through the directory and in that directory, you will see a code called read and map mod aerosol.py. This is the file which I want to run. Say so open, the code will come up here on the left side. You can browse it up and down. You can see this is a little bit lo longer code than what we see in the previous. It does read modis level two. 10 kilometer as well as three kilometer data and provide a map for each granule. Remember one thing, each Modis data file contain the data for five minutes of observations. So as satellite is overpassing, it continuously make measurements. And when the five minute measurements are combined together, it put together this file, which is called granule. We call it granule. So each mode is granule has five minutes worth of data. And that's what we are processing and trying to map. Okay, so now again, I will click on my IPython console and then without making any changes in the code and making sure I have the data file in the same directory and the file list, it will still read the same file list. You can see on the line number 24, it is still reading file list.txt. So if that file list is exist and the data file exists in the directory, this code should run without any error. So I will go on the top here. I will click here once. Again, to run, I'll go on the top, click on the green arrow, it says run file, and then it, I will run. And if everything is in place, the code run exactly the same manner as it was 
it's done in the first code. So it will start reading the list of file from the file list.txt. And the first file it comes with mydo4 underscore 3k. I will say, I will go to my IPython console, click next to the bracket of n, and then enter y in this manner. If you just enter y without quotes, then it might come up with error. Uh, it might work in Python 3.6, but Python 2.7 will like to use this way. Then I click enter. Now you see it start printing a lot of information on the IPython console. I want to briefly go over that. So in order to make sure that everybody is able to see it properly, I'm going to just increase the size of that window. So first thing it says, this is a three kilometer file and here is some information. So as we can see from the file name, it is three kilometer file. Now, the formatting is looks a little bit weird. You can play with it and make it more, uh, more, uh, uh, more suitable for visibility, but this is what the information is provided. The valid range of value is point minus point 0.1 to 5. So this is the valid value range of AOD, which mode is data contained in this file. The average value for the entire file on the valid is about 0 0.085. The standard deviation is about 0 0.083 for the entire granule. So we're talking about the entire file. It also gives you the range of latitude in this file, which is from 30 degree to 51 degree. And then the range of longitude is minus 138 to 105. Remember in session one, when we start downloading this data from the LATS wave, we remember we selected a box around the California in the United States during the October 8 and 9, 2017 to see the fire. So this is one of those files. I think this, I believe this is October 8. So this information provides you what is inside the file, how much area it covers. Okay. The next is, would you like to create a map of this data? Please say yes or no. I'm going to say yes, and then press enter, and then it should do something, and then it comes up with a map on my screen. Now, this map on the top, you see it says file name, which it is printing, and then the by default parameter, which is mapping. Optical depth, land, and ocean. Now, the next question it's asking is, can you save this map? Okay, if I say yes, then I will go back in my directory, do ls, and I will do the ls star png. This is my Mac terminal. You can look in your window directory just for look for a file name which is, ends with .png. This is my output which is saved as .png and I can open this and it's the file is there. So it created a map which is displayed on IPython console as well as it can save that image as a PNG, which you can use in your presentation paper or wherever you like to use. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, you can run it through the other uh, 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 files. I'm going to just run it for a few more years while others are catching up, uh, just to give enough time to other people to run through their, on their screen. I'm going to run to another image, another file for uh, 282. It prints out all the details about the AOD. You can see the numbers have changed, the area has changed. And then I will create a map of that. And then it start creating a map. 
I will save it as well. I'll go to the next file and then see I did an error here by mistake instead of one parenthesis two parentheses I only enter one and press the enter so it comes up with the error so what I will do is I will run it again so again I click on the run file it start with that since I have already create run through the first three files I will say no so that I can move on to the next files right now we are processing three kilometer files Now it is start with the 10 kilometer files. So I'll say yes, and then it will do the same thing. It'll create map while So depending on what I want, I can actually choose my output. So this is, uh, you can see actually on this particular image, uh, this is October 9 when the fire started. And this actually shows a very thick plume of smoke coming out of the uh, Bay Area in California, which is shown as the uh, orange and red colors. And if you look the AOD values on the color scale, it goes all the way from two to three. And that's actually a signal that uh, coming out from the smoke aerosols in the atmosphere which is transporting over ocean uh, just off the coast of Bay Area in California. Now there are a number of things uh, which you can actually change in the code to look this image prettier or to actually select different SDS. So I'm going to uh, give like two minutes for everybody to catch up and if you are not able to reach to this step uh, let me see how many people are able to do that. So I'm going to launch a poll just to see how many people have were able to achieve up to the step where they can see a map and save a image on their home on their directory. Uh, once you do that, I will explain through some of the parts of the code, uh, and then we'll move on to the next code. Okay, so looks like uh, I see a poll response where 80% people were able to do exactly what I did here and able to reproduce the results uh, of uh, in form of the map. So now I quickly want to go over this code and point out different uh, portion of the code where you can do, uh, where you can make changes to either enhance the quality of the image or to change the parameter or to change the color scales and things like that, okay? So again, the first thing is the file list.txt, which is where the file list file names were read. Second, uh, it does, uh, actually the code does uh, look into whether it's three kilometer or level two data file so that based on that, it will give you, uh, in three kilometer, it is writing optical depth land and ocean. This is what the map the map is produced. If you want to map another SDS, so this is the place where you can actually change the name of SDS which you want to map. By default, in three kilometer, this is the parameter which is mapped. In 10 kilometer, we are mapping the combined product, uh, AOD, uh, 50 doctor with deep blue, uh, again, you can change the name of SDS here, but it has the name has to match exactly as it in SGF file. And where you can get that? Running the script one, which creates the name of list of SDS in the HDF file. So that's the again useful thing of running the first script before this. Other things. 
uh, this is the portion where it is actually reading and finding the minimum and maximum of latitude longitude information uh, from the file. Here it is, the, uh, uh, this portion is just reading the name of uh, uh, the HDS. The data stored in HDF files are not necessarily in the same format as it displayed. So they are stored, they are stored in unsigned integer, the AOD values. Uh, to actually reduce the space, this space, and often that required to scale them. Once you read them, you have to, there's a scaling factor, and there is, so there are something called uh, attributes. So here is the, the next three, four lines, 68 to 74, that's where they are reading the attributes. So the scaling factor is there, and if there is an offset, that offset is read. Once you have those scaling factors, you you use those scaling factors to get the actual AOD values. So here is the where we are actually doing the actual AOD value, valid data into the scaling factors. And this portion of the code also actually takes care of any uh, missing data or NAN value, in other words. Uh, it is calculating the average, standard deviation if you want to calculate minimum maximum other parameter median few other things you can do it here you can change that the way you want to calculate that okay the next one uh, 93 on word line number it's basically mapping the data uh, we are using the best base map uh, uh, modules which we uh, installed earlier and before mapping it's just cleaning up making sure that the name data are not going into that and they are represented at the white uh, you can actually set different things so if you see line number 106 which is highlighted uh, am equal to base map you can select the projection you can select the resolution right now i said the low resolution you can actually also define the latitude longitude boundaries uh, by default it takes the boundaries of the granule but if you are not interested in the entire granule and if, if your region is very limited to a small one degree two degree pass you can fix that here uh, the next one another important aspect is the line number one 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 where you actually can it is selecting what kind of map you want to create. So it's using a, a map type called color mash map in Python. And that is used. And then the C map equal to PLT, CM, chat. This is the color scale it is choosing. And, and let me show you on a PPT. I have a link here. Uh, so this is the part I was showing in the code here which is pointed out on this PPT, and this is the color scale. If you look the plot cm.jet, which is this one, this is the one which we are using. If you want to use any of the other, this color scale, you can just change that name from jet to brg, hsv, renvo, and it will replace. There are many, many more color scale options in Python available which you can access through this link which is given here on the left uh, bottom corner that will help you to change your color scale that's another aspect let me go back to the Python code here the color bar you can also change the color bar right now the color bar is taking all the value which is there in the file from 0 to 3.5 maybe the maximum value available in the file but if you want to restrict highlight certain portion of the map in more broadly then you can restrict to one or three or two or 0.5 depending on what you want to highlight in your map uh, that can also be done here in the uh, this portion of the code uh, i think here uh, in towards the end if you want to save output other than 
PNG format, then there are options here. Right now I have like says png.save. Uh, you can actually save this figure in other format. If you change this to line 128 to JPEG or TIFF, then you should be able to save in that format. Uh, again, in order to really see this more, again, you can look online tutorials. There are, if you search, you will find a lot more options to save in different format. But this is the place where you want to make changes if you need to change the uh, format of output files. OK, uh, I think uh, so we are already 11.38, and we have just done two program. So I'm going to move a little bit faster uh, now onward. And the reason is all the codes remain the same as we have done here. Uh, uh, they will perform different tasks, and I will quickly go over those. One thing to make things faster I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, modify my file list. You don't have to do it. Uh, I'm just doing it so that we can actually go over this a little bit faster. So I'm going to run through 182, three kilometer file. Uh, I'll take that off and then 10 kilometer file. So I'm going to just keep the two file in my file list just to make sure, uh, just to run through quickly through each code that will allow me to do faster. But you don't have to do it. Uh, if you like, if you are easily able to do it, do it. Uh, you don't have to do it. Another thing, people, those who are still still struggling with the creation of file list or text, uh, we were not able to actually create that and provide in the handout. But what you can do is we have sent a list in the chat uh, in the question answer or the chat box section you can copy paste that open in text editor copy paste that there save it by list.txt and that should work okay so moving on to the next code i will restart my kernel just to make sure it runs smoothly i will close this code I will open next code by going to the left folder options. And the next code I want to run is, so I created aerosol optical depth map. Now I want to actually get aerosol optical depth at a given location. So this is the code which will actually print or extract the AOD value over a given location. So suppose you want to get AOD over a, let me actually open the PPT to explain this a little bit more. So what this code does actually is print, if you provide latitude and longitude of a ground location, it will print the value closest nearest uh, AOD value corresponding to the nearest pixel, it will also average the AOD value in three by three box, which is shown here in the left side of this slide. So it will take all those nine pixels uh, centered around your ground location, it will do an average of all the valid AOD pixels and provide a mean value. These are useful when you do validation studies when you do AODPN 2.5 relationship. Some people use the nearest pixel, some use three by three, some use five by five. So there is all three options that are available in this code. Again, you can modify that the way you want to print it, but these are options available. So let's do run this code. Uh, and again, I will click on the right side, uh, run file. Um, the green arrow and it should run exactly the same way as other programs were running. It will read the file list. The first file is three kilometer. I will say yes. And then it will give me an option which SDS would you like to view or uh, the type, the number, or press and percent. So right now I have four options. 
I'm going to choose optical depth, land, and ocean number one. You can change this list in the code. I will show you that in a little bit. Again, it displays the similar information. It gives me latitude and longitude range in the file. Now it is asking, enter the latitude you would like to analyze. So you have to provide a location of ground station or look city or whatever you want to process. So just you have to provide one latitude. Make sure when you providing that latitude should fall within this range which is given up. If it is outside the range, the code will not provide any AOD values. Also, it, although your value is inside the range, does not mean you will always get AOD value, depending on whether the algorithm retrieved AOD on that pixel or not. If there is a cloud or any other algorithmic restriction applied, then you will not see any value there. So, I'm going to choose a value of 30 degree, 30.5 degree. Let's see if we get any value corresponding to that. And then also I have to provide a longitude. And in this case, my longitude should fall between minus 114 to minus 143. I'll choose minus 125 and then click enter. Now, you can read that the nearest pixel to your location is this latitude and longitude. My initial latitude longitude is 30.5. I found actually very close one, 30.497. And the longitude, I say 125, I found minus 125. So this is the nearest pixel latitude longitude corresponding to my ground station. But I selected this parameter called optical depth land and ocean and its value at that pixel is minus 999. It means not a valid point. There are no valid pixel in 3 by 3 grid box, and there are no valid pixel in 5 by grid box. It means there was no a valid AOD value were found within that point. So let's, let's try running on another file. And you can actually run, change few things in the code and run it for the multiple station also. But I'm going to just run for another file and let's try if we can find a valid AOD value uh, in that another files. So again, I will, now I have a 10 kilometer file. Now in 10 kilometer, as I said, the deep blue product is also included. So I'm going to just say deep blue uh, the number one. I will just choose that uh, again my uh, latitude longitude range is 19 by to 40 I will pick 25 maybe similar location and let's pick the same longitude minus 125 and let's see so there's no value in this one as well so um, let me run it again one more time I can click on that green arrow to run it again and let's try to find a value in this one this time I'm going to say image optical depth the number three and let's pick another latitude maybe I will go a little bit higher 35 degree or maybe let's say 32 degree point five and then minus 123.5 I'm just trying and still there is no value in this one somehow. Let me try again on another file. The two, okay, and let's see. 26.0 and then latitude, longitude, I'm going to try 130.5. Okay, due to some reason, I'm not getting any values. Uh, let me check the map actually where I'm get, having the values so that this is, uh, oh, 180, 182.145. So 
I'm running this file. Uh, so it looks like there are values around 105 west and then 40, around 46 north. So let's try that. So run it again. Yes. And then three. And then latitude is about 46 degree. Oh, no. This does not have that. Uh, no, this is different file. 282 to 140. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not the same file. 282, 214. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a different file. Okay, I'm just randomly trying to see where the AOD values is there in that file. Uh, um, the other way to look that to do this more precisely is run your first code, create PNG files, see where the valid values are there, and then you can actually pick one of those locations to test your code. Okay, we found it. Good. So I I picked thirty six point uh, six and longitude is minus 126.5 and then it gives me all the information corresponding to that information so this is image optical depth look land and ocean this is the parameter which i selected the pixel value closest to that my location is 0.185 it says there are eight pixels within that three by three grid box so there is total nine possible out of nine we have eight valid the average value for that 8 pixels is 0.179. The median value is 0.18. Both mean and median are very close to each other. It indirectly tells me that there is a very less standard deviation, and you can see that in the standard deviation value 0.008. So it's a very homogeneous space. There are 17 valid pixels in 5 by 5 grid centers around that station. And if you look the average value for five by five box, it is 0.177. Again, it's very close to three by three box. So we have picked a location where aerosols are very homogeneous and there's a very less spatial variability within that three by three or five by five uh, grid box area. Okay, I'm going to now say no. And uh, so this is the whole purpose of this code. Uh, now, if you are co look, if you want to do validation of AOD over certain locations, uh, you can use this code, modify it, or run it automatically so that it can process. You can avoid all this yes, no thing uh, on the command line. I have created those in that way so that we can see the process through but you can automate those. It, you can all go to the code. You can change all those things from here so that code doesn't ask from the screen. It does the default job. Again, you can change the SDS, which you want to output from here uh, around line 39. Uh, the code pretty much remains same as we have seen in earlier version. Only thing changes which I want to show here is it does calculate the distance between each pixel and the location which you have given so this it does calculate the uh, radius uh, using a uh, it's called spherical distance on the sphere so it does account the curvature of earth and it calculate the distance and find out the nearest pixel so this is the portion which is doing that now this is where it is taking three by three pixels. So if you want to do four by four, you can change this. Uh, this is three by three, and this is five by five. So in five by five, you go five pixel, uh, three pixel left, three pixel right, and this is the. If you want to change these numbers to other number of pixels, six by six, seven by seven, ten by ten, and you can do change that here. I think that's all this code has in order to change. 
Okay, so as we are running late, let me go to the next code. Okay, so since uh, we are running out of time, so let's do one thing. We will go over one more code, and then the remaining one more code will remain, which we can actually cover on Monday. Uh, we have uh, we are doing Monday uh, uh, analyzing, going through the same script, but using the OMI data. So uh, we can do that. So let's go over one more code uh, for this. So. In order to do that, I'm going to restart my kernel, and then I will close this code, and then I will open my directory to choose another code. And I think this is useful code is called read mod aerosol and dump ascii.py. So this is the code. For example, you really don't want to deal with HDF data. And you are very comfortable working with access or text file. Then what this code is does is it can convert the HDF file. You can select what parameter from that HDF file you want as output and then dump everything in a text file or CSV file. The CSV file is can be opened in any text editor. It's comma separated file. It can also be opened in Excel uh, uh, to analyze or to make charts or to do any kind of uh, data you know, modification. So again, uh, this is the same thing. The code is very similar. It's just writing the data in CSV file output. Uh, right now, the code actually does, uh, let me run this code once and then we can look the output actually. So, running this code again, it goes through the same sequence. I say yes, and then it says, it won't ask you anything at this point. Uh, uh, it will just save the data, it says, this is a three kilometer modus file setting. In order to see the output, I can go back to my directory. If you are on window, you can open that. Or if, and then I will look for text file. So there are two text files. One is the file list, and then another one is my mydo4 underscore three dot text. So this is the file it created. I can open that. Uh, you can open that in any text editor. So uh, if you are comfortable with the Mac commands, you can follow what I'm doing. Otherwise, you can just double click on that file and it should open. So once you open this file, you will see data like this. You can see each column is separated by comma. And on the top header, you will see list of the parameters which are uh, output here. So you have year, month, day, hour. Remember this hour is in GMT time you know, or UTC time. Minutes, seconds, latitude, longitude, optical depth length, Ocean, image optical depth, land ocean, land sea flag, which will tell you whether it's land or sea. Zero means over ocean, one is land, two means coastal areas. And low, land ocean quality flag, which is the last one, uh, which varies from zero, one to three. So again, you can go back in the code and change which SDS you want to output. Suppose you want to add two more, you can add in your, go into your code, add two more SDS and it will output those two. If you don't want all of them, you can ch change that as well. So this is the file which you can open in Excel easily. 
just go to your Excel, open that file, and it should you should be able to open that. Now let me show you the portion of the code where it does change, okay? Where you can change those SDS. So, so this is between you see this line number 39 and 43. So line number 39 is for three kilometer product. So here is the list of SDS which you can actually uh, output optical depth land and ocean, image optical depth land and ocean, land sea flag optical depth land ocean core. These are the SDS corresponding to AOD values. There are some default, I will show you which are printed like year month. Uh, if you want to change for level two data fields, the line 43 is where they are listed. Deep blue aerosol optical depth, 550 AOD dark target combined, quality flag with the combined. So there are three in the 10 kilometer. And these on the bottom here are some default year, month, day, hour, minute, second, latitude, longitude. If you want to add another parameter like solar zenith angle or other things, you can include those as well. So again, this is a, all these quotes which we are providing today, they are just to get started with they may not do the task exactly what you like to do, but if you make some changes in this code, they can become your base code and then you improve on them. You change a little bit here and there and then you can do the task which you like to be, uh, want to perform. So you can see that the 10 kilometer file and then now it is asking for 10 kilometer file, I'll say yes. Now the three kilometer file, of course, will have much more data points corresponding to uh, with respect to the 10 kilometer file and you, both of these files should be visible in your directory. Okay, let me go through a couple of slides here before we finish this session. Uh, there's one more code left uh, to do the um, uh, PM 2.5 mapping, which we will go on Monday actually. So let me point out a few things. So one is this is the application for the mapping code. Uh, just to give you an example that uh, you can actually map the aerosol optical depth and then superimpose the ground station in this case. And if you look these as a time series, you can see the transport of certain aerosol events like smoke or dust or urban pollution over certain area. And you can present in nicely, nice way using this Python script. Uh, the, the script which we have given does not do exactly the same what you are seeing here on the slide, but you can make small changes in that script and will you able to create this kind of map. Another thing I want to point out about this uh, AOD, when you extract the AOD over a particular location, you can run that for the entire year, for a certain time, over one station, or you can run over many stations that code. And then once you have that AOD value, you can either compare with the PM2.5 and create a relationship like this, which is shown here in the middle panel. Uh, you can. You, you can actually. I'm not mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't know what happened. I was not mute. Okay, so in the middle, you can see the AOD PM 2.5 relationship, which we talked in session one also. So the code which extract the AOD over ground location can be used and you can create a plot like that actually by creating that kind of database. You can also validate MODIS data with Aeronet, which I talked in session one. Uh, again, you can get the Aeronet data from Aeronet site, MODIS data using this Python script, and then you can create a uh, scatter plot like that. You can also extract AOD over certain location actually and create a time series like this, the one I have created in uh, uh, extreme right on slide number 30. Uh, so you can choose any specific city or ground locations 
or any big area and extract the AOD and then you can run through a time series and create a time series to demonstrate uh, in terms of the trend uh, how the seasonal uh, AOD variations is observing over the, that particular location or how aerosol loading in the atmosphere is changing over a uh, long period of time. As I said earlier, we have this data all the way available from the 2000. So we, we have almost 17, 18 years of aerosol optical depth record from MODIS, which can be useful to look this long-term change in aerosol field. Okay, uh, so the last code which is left is uh, to create the map like this. Uh, and we will go through that actually on Monday. Uh, what I will do is now is I will give you two to five minutes to just wrap up all the Python things and then we'll go over question answers uh, and hopefully most people were able to do it. Uh, let me actually, before we go to the question answer, let, I have some polls I want to get. Uh, let me put out some polls uh, while you are closing your Python sessions. Uh, so that I can get a feeling of, uh, okay, so this is first poll. I will, each poll will be displayed by, each poll will be displayed for about 40 seconds and I will close after 40 seconds. Uh, just pay attention to your screen, uh, respond to that poll and then we'll take question answer in five minutes. So the poll question was modest GPU AOD product is available at three kilometer resolution and the correct answer is no, it's false, which most people have done. Um, so the three kilometer product is not available from the deep blue algorithm. It's only available from the dark target algorithm. Just to remember it. Now, going back to the code which you were running to dump the ASCII file, several people are complaining they are having error. So my recommendation to that is go to your Python, IPython consoles, go on the top right, click on the setting and say restart corner. Sometimes what happens, it does remember uh, some I value from the previous run and it might be uh, creating that problem. If you are seeing that error in line number 74 in the code, restart the kernel, run again, uh, and I hope it should work fine. Uh, we did test here and it was looks like it was working fine. So try that. Okay, meanwhile, for those who have already done, I have another poll. So let me hide the result for this. Uh, this should be easier. We have gone over this many, many times. So this is just asking about the satellite name through which this product comes. Sorry, I was on the mute. Uh, so let me explain again. So the, if it is MYD, then it's aqua. If it is MOD, it's a terra, irrespective of level two or three kilometer product. Uh, again, this information is in the slides. So uh, just pay attention when you start using the database because it does make different um, which satellite you're using. Now, Another question related to the quality flag. The highest AOD quality data corresponds to quality flag value of what? This is also very, very important uh, when you start data for quantitative purpose. Um, now, this is a tricky question. Uh, so, okay, is, so the correct answer is quality flag three. Uh, Although over ocean, you can also use one and two, uh, uh, which are recommended by the sciences team, but the highest still remain three. 
so this is just an order in which the quality flags are assigned okay now let's go to the question answer session and we have another 20 minutes for until we have this room so we'll try to answer as much as we can uh, if we cannot answer all of them we will try to do that on monday uh, so we'll move to the question answer now Okay, great. So the lot of question I will go one by one. The so question number one, how can the average median and standard deviation of AOD and number of pilot pixel be useful in informing local air quality policies? Wow. Okay, so this is little uh, difficult question uh, and it the answer really depends on what is the when you say air quality policy what it means okay so the average value on that three by three or five by five represent what is the average uh, concentration of aerosols or pm 2.5 in that region median represent basically similar thing but it's a different statistical parameter to represent the median, it does uh, take into account the skinniness of the data and how the data is distributed. So some people rely more on median, others rely on average. And again, that can vary on this uh, uh, location to location and application to application. A standard deviation will tell you how much variability within those three by three and five by five pixels are there in that region. Now, in terms of how does it affect the policy, uh, I think if uh, the variability is less in a given over a given city, for example, you want to monitor air quality over a big large city, and uh, the area of that city is about 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer or 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer, and you find that the very standard deviation is very low. Uh, consistently over different season, over different time, then it's telling you that the source are quite homogeneously located within the city and the distributions are homogeneous and not changing too much. And that might also suggest that you may not need too many ground management stations. But if you see large variability in high resolution data like three kilometer, uh, it suggests that there's a huge variability. There are many, many different sources, and may, you may need much more ground-based monitoring. So that's more going back to the policy level, but it's it's statistical parameter. These are to evaluate uh, the the uh, the distribution of aerosols in that region. Okay. Uh, the next question, modest 3 kilometer is a resample product, modest 10 kilometer product. What sort of algorithm is used to resample, regrade? Okay, so modest 3 kilometer is not a resampled product. It's ex the same algorithm which applies on 10 kilometer is applied to run at 3 kilometer resolution. As you can recall from session one, the original modest resolution is either 250 meter resolution 500 meter resolution or one kilometer resolution those are the three resolution at which different spectral channel of modis makes the radiance measurement when we convert that radiance to aerosol optical depth we can choose which resolution we want to create that aerosol optical depth uh, we can either create at one kilometer resolution, which is original resolution. Uh, in this case, we have chosen to create a three kilometer resolution and 10 kilometer resolution. The algorithm remains exactly the same. Uh, there are only a few minor changes uh, when it comes to the pixel selection and cloud masking. Uh, otherwise, everything remains the same. Again, uh, there is the link on our PPT uh, called uh, dot target dot gov 
uh, that website should provide you more details on the three kilometer, 10 kilometer algorithm. You'd like to get more on that. Okay, the next question is, question number three, what kind of testing framework does NASA models team use in processing models data? What are good practice tips for testing satellite data processing and analysis? Okay, I am not very sure what exactly testing framework means. If you are implying to talk about the validation of the data sets, uh, then we use uh, Aeronet data sets. Uh, uh, if you are asking about specific programming language, then uh, different people use different uh, programming language. Some use Ideal, some use Python, some use other Fortran and other things. So it really varies to people to people. Uh, I am not sure what else you mean by testing framework. If you can be more specific, uh, or you can shoot me an email and I probably will be able to answer you more specific on that. The next question is, the map is saved as PNG. How should we have it saved as GeoTIFF or TIFF image so that the image can be manipulated in ArcMap or other software? Uh, so in Python, uh, like I showed in the code, there is a towards the end, there is an option to select the extension. Uh, I believe you can select all the image extension like JPEG, PNG, TIFF. Uh, in order to save as a GeoTIFF, uh, I think you have to do a you know, little bit more. Uh, there are other uh, codes available online if you search to convert from HDF to GeoTIFF also. As I was talking in session one, when you order the data on the Let's Web website, there is, and if you go to the post processing, there is options to save the data as GeoTIFF. And that's where you can select that option and the data which you will receive from NASA will be post processed and will be in GeoTIFF, which you can open in your ArcGIS software. Uh, there's a question on this type error on the tuple. Uh, I believe this is related to the dump ASCII file code. And as we mentioned that if you reset your Python console, that error should go away sometime. Python is start remembering uh, value of that specific variable from earlier run, and that can, can create that problem. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how to fix that uh, permanently, but I'm sure there should there are there, there must be ways to reset the variable within the code. Uh, next question is: Each pixel has latitude and longitude data. Is that the center of that pixel? The yes. The answer is yes. When saving the map as PNG, is there a way to increase the resolution? Yes. So if you go to the base map. Uh, part of the code where uh, we are calling m equal to base map and then we are providing all the parameter within the base map. There is a keyword for the resolution. So I believe you can select low, high, medium, or you can even give the DPI uh, range there. So yes, there is a way to do that. Is it, there is some way to help after the class. So. Uh, one thing we would recommend is go over the recording, which we'll post soon. Uh, try to go over the PPT, which comes with this presentation, where we have step-by-step uh, -step, uh, instruction on how to do that. Uh, and try yourself. If it's still you find problem, try to write us, and we will try to resolve the problem. In order to get time series AOD data, we need to download all the MODIS files, or can we obtain ready-made time series data from LATS portal? Uh, no, you cannot get ready-made data from the LATS. You have to download the files and create yourself. Again, try to look the post-processing options when you order the data. There are certain options in post-processing where you can actually 
combine many different HDF file into one single file and maybe that works to create time series but I have not done personally so I know I don't know the details but please look the post processing option it has a lot of options to manipulate the data is optical depth land and ocean already filtered for the quality flag or do we use the land ocean quality flag product for filter ourselves yes this is highest quality data already filtered uh, for land uh, q equal to 3 for ocean q equal to 1 2 3 and this is true for both 10 kilometer and 3 kilometer product from the processed information can we can it be converted to a vector shape? Uh, I have no clue what that means. Uh, so I'll just skip that question. If you want to rephrase it or be specific, uh, I'll try to answer it. Question number 12. For the line 106, what are the other options for resolution? L is for low, but what is the medium high? I am not sure that at top of my head. Uh, I'm sure if you do little search online, uh, you should be able to find that. Um, there's a whole tutorial online on the use of base map. And uh, you can post the link here if you like, or you can just Google it and should be able to find it. If you would like to add state borders to the map, you could add trust it uh, I think this is somebody responding to somebody else question I don't think that's question this is just to showing how to draw state boundaries or other boundaries you can always import shape files and do those things I tried to download the data through the FTP and I could not do. Uh, for that, I will strongly recommend to follow the instructions given in the email. When you order the data on the Let's website, it will send you an email which provides very detailed instructions and multiple options to download the data. Question 15, should we modify read and map AOD aerosol PY code to show maps? On showing maps, should we modify the code for Python 3? So looks like uh, somebody might have errors, but the read and aid and map mod aerosol.py should create a map for you. You don't have to change anything in that code. If you are using Python 3.6, uh, it should work uh, as it is. It might come up with um, print related error, but I believe it should work uh, uh, as it is. And we can check that in next week actually when we are uh, going to use 3.6 uh, uh, on Monday. Question 16, if no map is created, but it says it has processed the data, what might be? There's no option to say when I run the code. Am I missing a particular package? I have no idea about that. Uh, if, if, if it is saving map, if it is not saving map, then it should come up with some kind of error. If it is not coming up with the error, make sure you're running the write code for that by running on the code. <laughs> uh, question 17, is it possible to get some help of class? I think we already answered that. Question 18, how do I know which variable is still file are relevant for say ODF or the other stuff? Yes, so this is really important question. In order to know which SDS to I would strongly recommend to refer to uh, product ATVT called as uh, algorithm theoretical theoretical document. 
So you can go to dogtarget.gsfc.nasa.gov uh, to get that ATVT, uh, where you will find details on each SDS. Uh, for Deep Blue, there is a, another website called deepblue.gsfc.nasa.gov. Uh, it provides all the details and documentation on each of those SDS and will have some recommendation to be used for various applications. Yes, uh, question 19 is, do you have any recommendation papers to learn more about AODPM 2.5 relationship? Yes, so uh, we can post some, uh, we can post some recommendations on the paper, but, but there is a very nice review paper in 2009 published in Air and West Management. It's called uh, by Hoff and Christopher. It's a review paper. Uh, and it does provide very basic information about AODPM 2.5 relationships. There is also a guidebook published, which is available on our set page. It's called uh, Air Quality Guide, uh, User Guide by Brian Duncan and other people. Uh, it's published in Atmospheric Environment, and that paper is freely available for everyone to download. Okay, the next question. Uh, we have a few more minutes and let me check uh, kind of tools you use. What kind of tools you use to bulk process modis file to, uh, to derive ODPM to find? I personally use Ideal. Other people use Python. Uh, so it really varies a uh, lot uh, with person to person and what they're familiar with. Would you mind summarizing again the difference use this case and pro cons of deep blue versus dark target derived variable? Yes. So the dark target algorithm works over dark vegetated areas. So as the name suggests, dark target means the surface should be dark enough. So over water, dark target is pretty good. Over vegetated areas, forest where a lot of vegetation is there, even urban areas, a dark target is pretty good. Deep blue algorithm works all all the places including dog target and bright surfaces so if you are looking to get aerosol optical depth over large cities where things vegetation is very minimal deep blue might be for, uh, providing better accuracies if you are look going to areas where uh, the surface is bright like desert areas like in uh, uh, western us sahara or middle east or uh, deserts in india and china uh, then you will find that the dark target product is not either not available or it's lower quality. So that's where you want to use the deep blue product. Okay. Uh, I want to monitor PM10, which SDS do I have to use? You can use optical depth, land and ocean. That's the best quality data uh, over uh, from the dark target algorithm. If your location involves deep blue, uh, bright surface, then you might want to use the deep blue or sort of optical depth best estimate SDS. Is necessary to do atmospheric correction to process the image? Uh, atmospheric corrections have been already performed on all of when we retrieved aerosol optical depth. So at your point, you don't have to do that. Is AOD at 10 kilometer and 3 kilometer are correlated at all location? Is 3 kilometer data better? Uh, so like I said earlier, both 10 kilometer and 3 kilometer are processed using exactly the same algorithm. The only difference is the resolution, and that comes with some Usually, our validation study shows that the three kilometer data is lower in quality compared to 10 kilometer. Uh, three kilometer data are good to pick the small scale features, but it also comes with a lot more noise. Uh, 10 kilometer product has compared better with Aeronet uh, on a global scale.
Yes, you can. Uh, the question number 23 is all HDF files have to be processed one by one. What if you have hundreds of files? Is there a way to batch process all the files? Yes, uh, you have to make some co uh, minor change in the code, uh, specifically in places where it is reading the input from the screen. Uh, if you can comment those and uh, hardwire uh, that it should process irrespective of a screen command, it should process all the file in your code, then it will just keep running the code. Uh, it won't ask you. So those are very small mind change you have to do in the code and it should run for every single file. Currently, what are more excited about in satellite monitoring of air quality? Any upcoming satellite? Uh, we will talk about that actually in uh, on Monday when we talk about some of the new uh, recently launched satellites and upcoming satellites. Uh, can you suggest any R models? Uh, no, I cannot. Uh, I have no, no idea how the R works. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, thank you everyone for attending today's session. I hope people were able to run the script. If you were having difficulties, please try to go over the presentations. Uh, the recordings will also be available soon. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, we will come back on Monday and we will do similar exercise on Monday using window machine and we will look the NO2 and SO2 data and hopefully some of this uh, errors which you are getting today you will be able to resolve over the weekend and then we'll uh, do that. Um, I think that's all I have. Uh, thank you everyone and enjoy your weekend.